from the WKBN First News Network, home of the High School Football Big 22 Award, celebrating over 20 years of live television sports in the Valley. This is the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week, sponsored by Stadium GM, Sheely's, and Farmers National Bank. It tonight live from rain-soaked Bow Line Stadium in Niles. As week 13 has arrived, it's the Division Three Region 9 semifinals as 10 and 2 Ursland faces off with 10 and 1 Canfield. Hi again, everybody. Chad Prispinski alongside Ralph Sandy. Ralph, this is one of the most highly anticipated games we've seen in a long, long time. We're in for a good one, aren't we? Yeah, it's great to be in week 13. It features two local teams in a matchup that we're really not used to, Ursland versus Canfield. It should be a good one in the wet weather here tonight. It has been raining since early this morning. Ursuline won the toss and deferred. So it will be the Canfield Cardinals getting the football to start this one. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this one. It should be a fantastic matchup. These two teams have met twice before. Ursuline winning both of those matchups in 1983 and 1984. And the football is teed up by McGlone. It is a short kickoff, and we have our first whistle and our first stoppage. And it's Ursuline coming across early. Our referee tonight is John Oyer. So back the Irish up, and we'll try it again. For the Irish eager to get at it, and the fans that we do have here tonight in this inclement weather also excited to, to get at it here tonight. I was told they sold about 1,200 tickets, and you can bet lots of folks selected to maybe stay in drier conditions in the friendly confines of their home, and they're enjoying our telecast here tonight on the WKBN app. So we'll try it again, second go round. McGlone drills it downfield. It's caught across the 20, 25, 30, up to the 36 yard line. And that is where the Canfield offense will set up shop first down and 10. On the return for the Cardinals, it was Jack Davis. Let's check out our keys to the game, which are brought to you by Wendy Perez of the Wendy Perez team. She has the keys to your new home in tonight's game. Ralph. Yeah, for Urson tonight, they know that the offense goes through the run game, and they want to stop the run game of Canfield. For Canfield, they want to own the trenches on both sides of the ball, and both of these teams realize with the weather the way it is, the turnover margin may be the deciding factor. First down and 10, they mark the ball at the 36-yard line. Brock Lowry is the Canfield quarterback. Out of the gun, Lowry rolling, looking to throw. He fires downfield. It is incomplete. There's a flag down in the middle of the field. Yeah. So we'll check it out. Brock Lowry took a huge shot after throwing that football, and it may have been a late hit. We'll wait to see the official call. Already a couple of penalties early on in this one, and we will get the call from John Oyer. And it is an illegal man downfield against Canfield. So back the Cardinals up five yards. Here's the hit you talked about, Ralph. Well, you look at it there, certainly it looked like Tyreek Donlow had let up a little bit, certainly didn't drive him into the ground. So a good no call on that part. Still have the man downfield first of 15. Mike Pavlansky getting an explanation from the official on the near side. Couple of backs in the backfield for the Cardinals. Brock Lowry awaits the snap. He will fake the handoff, looks to throw. It is caught up to the 40 and ahead of the 43-yard line. Jack Davis, an active part here early on. And the Cardinals in business. A big gainer. It'll set up second down and short. Lowry going to take another hit on the second play of the game. But I love the fact that Cardinals come out here. They don't care what the weather is. They're going to stick to the game plan. You see him come out with two straight passes. It'll be second down and two. They mark the ball just shy of the 44 as you look at that Canfield offense led by quarterback Brock Lowry. He is verbally committed to play college football at Indiana in the Big Ten. 
Second and two from the 44-yard line. Cardinals bring a man in motion. They'll turn and give. It's across the 50. 45, 40, 35, 30. Down the sideline. 10, 5, touchdown, Scotty Eaton. Cardinals strike for six early in quarter number one. Boy, as you watch that play develop, the line does a great job of getting to that second level of linebackers. You see a block there in the secondary. Boy, Scotty Eaton is not touched on his way to the end zone. A well-executed play. 56-yard touchdown run. Canfield strikes first. Now the extra point by Joel Myasek. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and the kick is no good. May have been deflected, 10.57 left to play in the opening quarter, 6-0 Canfield on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Farmers National Bank, fiercely local, fiercely loyal. Your first home. Thanks, Dad. You like Amber, my banker from Farmers National Bank. I use their mobile mortgage app. Awesome user interface. Interface? What about good old face-to-face? -face? Farmers Banking Tech is great. Give it a try. What if I have questions? That's what's cool about a bank that's not just online. You can talk to real local people. Oh, like Amber. Dad joke. That's not a dad joke. Farmers. Fiercely local. Fiercely loyal. Canfield student section out in full force despite Mother Nature not being very kind on this Friday evening. But they've got to love what they just saw from Scotty Eaton, the 56 yard touchdown run. The rains continue to fall here at Bull Ryan Stadium. It's a low line drive squib kick picked up and taken across the 30, across the 40, and ahead to the 42 yard line on the return for the Irish, John Frangos. And now we'll get our first look at the Irish offensive unit, which is very explosive. Ralph, we've seen them a couple of times. They have plenty of offensive weapons. Absolutely. I think the speed on that Irish offense is the thing that has been most impressive through the three times that we've seen him this year. Watch out for Christian Lynch, a two-time player of the game for us this year. The strength of this team up front of the offensive line. The quarterback is Jack Erickson, and Erickson will turn and give. Up the middle of the 45-yard line, it is D.C. Farrell, who transferred over to Ursuline from Liberty. You'll see him run the ball, he'll catch the ball, and he'll line up at quarterback as well on occasion. Triangle in the backfield for the Ursuline Irish. D.C. Farrell now all alone in the backfield. Four wide receivers to the left, one near side to the right. Farrell, counter play, puts his head down and rumbles forward to the 49-yard line. Brought down by Dom Marzano. That'll set up a third down and manageable for Ursuline. And I think as the season's developed, you've seen this Urson offense kind of develop more ways to get that guy, number 15, D.C. Farrell, the football. Yeah, get him into the open field and... He can do some things. Brock Lowry can do some things at safety as well. All kinds of running room up the middle of the 40-yard line. Blasting its way. It's Christian Lynch, and it's an Ursuline first down. You know, Christian Lynch is one of those running backs that has been so impressive this year at 5'10", 181. You know, we've seen him get as many as 30 carries in a ball game. A durable back with some speed. Erickson now sweeping the left side. He tap dances his way out of bounds. A short pickup inside the 40. And let's see where they mark it. Looks like about the 38-yard line, but we'll see where they put it down. It'll be just inside the 40, so not quite the 38-yard line. It'll be second down and nine. Triangle in the backfield once again for Erickson. Same formation as earlier in this game. D.C. Farrell awaits the snap. He will keep it himself, and Farrell tripped. Fell forward after picking up just a yard. 
And it'll set up third down and nine. Wrapped up by Caden Cahoot. And that's the thing this Canfield defense is going to be weary of. You know, you put D.C. Farrell at quarterback. You know he's a running threat. You know he could throw it a little bit. You have to remember his backfield mate, Christian Lynch, is coming in motion in front of him. Something to keep your eye on throughout the night. Irish bring a man in motion, and more penalty flags fly. The Irish moved prematurely. And that'll back them up five yards. And it'll be third down, now in 14. Ursuline loves to play with tempo. From the 14-yard line, they will turn and give to Farrell. Farrell sweeping the near side, and Farrell pushed out of bounds. Outside the 40-yard line, and I'll tell you what, Ralph, this Canfield defense looks sharp, Jack. Fabry is there to make the tackle for the Cardinals. Yeah, you could definitely tell they did their homework. You could see the speed of them getting to the sideline to force that play as wide as they can, and Fabry with a nice tackle there on the sidelines. Anytime special teams is a part of this, you always have to watch and see. Dan Reardon so many times will go to the bag of tricks. Mark Manning now comes in. And he lines up in punt formation. On fourth down and 11. Clean snap. Manning with a line drive kick. It will hit inside the 10, inside the 5. And let's see if they'll roll it a touchback or where they will spot the ball. It looks as if it will not be a touchback, Ralph. Yeah, who, I, it was hard to tell who that first person down there for the Irish was, but they dove, knocked that ball back into the playing area, so it doesn't get in the end zone. Here we go. Let's take a look at it. It looks like it's number eight, Terry and Davis. Boy, that's a great special teams play, and you talked about it. How oftentimes in big games like this, special teams always plays a factor. Good hustle by Tyran Davis. And it is first and ten, but... They're going to mark the football at the 11-yard line, it appears. And I think that ball hit Davis uh, on the fly in that area. All right, so first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Cardinals with one back in the backfield. Brock Lowry awaits the snap. Some early movement. And it appears the Irish moved early on. So we've seen our fair share of penalties. Of course, the winner of this ball game advances to face the winner of Chardon and Kenston. That Chardon team has eliminated Canfield each of the last two years. And so it'll be first down and 15 from the six yard line as Canfield called for moving early six nothing cardinals with the lead down to 844 left to play here in the opening quarter brock lowry brings a man in motion left to right and lowry will not put his head down he will run straight up the middle and he blasts his way up across the 10 Number and ahead 12, near the 11 or 12 lowry yard line had a chance to talk with coach pavlansky a number of times throughout the season about what Brock Lowry has meant. He's like another coach on the field. Coach Pav called him a special talent, one of the best athletes to ever come out of the Cardinal program, and one of the best leaders Coach Pavlansky has ever had the privilege to coach. He's coached a lot of good ones, that's for sure. It is second down and 10 from the original line of scrimmage at the 11. Slant pass, juggled and caught up near the 14-yard line. That's Jack Davis again for the Cardinals. It did not net much, but it sets up a third and medium situation on in coverage for Ursland. It was Mark Manning. We like the concentration by Davis. How many times do we see those balls tipped on those patterns that end up going the other way? for a turnover. Davis able to concentrate, reel it in, 
It give them a little more manageable third down. We wondered how the wet conditions would impact the passing game. We haven't seen anything really deep downfield. It's been very short and manageable. This is Lowry putting his head down and rumbling ahead of the 17-yard line. It is a pickup of three on the play. He's wrestled down, knocked to the turf by Isaac Lucas. And now the Canfield punt group will come out. They bring a couple extra blockers to that right side and run Brock Lowry. They're a nice job by that Irish defense forcing the punt. For Canfield, number 45, Ali Shalash. Ali Shalash in punt formation, averaging just under 33 yards per kick. This one is angled towards the near sideline. A short kick out of bounds, and Ursland will have great field position after this on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Teal College, a creative, energetic place that's rooted in academic excellence, innovation, and tradition. Where motivated students become motivated graduates. Where so much is so close. Teal College, that's where. Good luck to both teams in tonight's game from Valley Industrial Trucks. Valley Industrial Trucks, your professional full-service material handling corporation. And back to it, D.C. Farrell on a carry, and he races his way down to the 30. And he's knocked down there. Anytime you get him into the open field, Farrell, well, he can make things happen. And Ursuline quickly back to the line of scrimmage. And Farrell will keep it himself. He's to the 25. Farrell bouncing it to the outside, and he is very quickly into the BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel Red Zone. We talked about how quick he is, but you notice on that play, he kind of just stopped in his tracks for a second, waited to see what that defense was going to do, waited for his blocks to set up, and then headed upfield and towards the sidelines. First and 10 from the 16-yard line, D.C. Farrell takes the snap, puts his head down, muscling his way inside the 15, down to the 14-yard line. And it is a pickup of a couple. Ryan Schneider there to make the tackle for the Cardinals. Checking into the backfield for the Irish, it is Christian Lynch, who has been a monster rushing the football for better than 1,700 yards. Lynch takes the handoff, rumbling his way inside the 10 and wrestled down at the 8-yard line. Christian Lynch. Very strong, running with a chip on his shoulder. And running with the big fell out in front of him. That was Brian Frasco pulling over to the right side, leading the way for Lynch. Third and two from the eight yard line. Erickson gives it to Lynch. Lynch trying to bust it to the outside. And he is wrestled down by Anthony Masella. Danny Inglis also helping the cause. And it'll be fourth down and two upcoming for the Irish. We talked about it earlier. That Canfield defense doing a nice job securing tackles in the open field. Jack Erickson will keep it himself. Erickson puts his head down and rumbles inside the five. And it'll be first down and goal for Ursuline. And I think that's something that gets lost in the shuffle sometimes with Christian Lynch and D.C. Farrell being so effective out of the backfield. I think sometimes you lose sight of how good Jack Erickson is with the ball in his hands. Jumbo formation, the big guy in the backfield. We saw it earlier this season against Cardinal Mooney. And they put the big lineman Michael Branch back there. And he'll get another crack. High snap over Branch's head. And Branch pounces on it at the 16-yard line. Oh, what a turn of events, Ralph. We go with that jumbo package, and you go quick. And I think that's caused some of those issues right there. Nice job by Branch getting on that football, which will bring up a third and goal from deep. But I think the Irish kind of rushed that one a little bit. Wow, what a big play 
Well, there's a chance you thought if Branch couldn't pounce on it, Canfield could take it back the other way. Erickson completes it to Bernie. Bernie buried at the 18. It's a loss on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Tackle made by Ryan Schneider. His second stop on this possession for Ursuline. And we will see the field goal unit coming out. It is James McGlone. And I think that bad snap and that play on second down is something you kind of circle right now and say we, we got to keep our eye on that later in the ball game to see how much of a difference that's going to make in this ball game. 34 yard field goal attempt, snap back, ball down, kick blocked! And the Irish are turned away, scoreless with 2.47 left to play in quarter number one. Boy, you thought it was a mere formality. They would get something on the drive. And a heck of a block off the edge. I think that was Brock Lowry coming off the edge blocking that punt. Just like that, it is first and 10 from the 17-yard line for Kentfield. Following tonight's action, we will select a player of the game. It's one player that has made the greatest impact during our game of the week. It's sponsored by our good friends at Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Teal College. So after all of that, back out comes Brock Lowry. And Lowry fakes the handoff, looking to throw, and Lowry fires. Did a great job to just get rid of it. Great pressure from Casey Lugers, who had a pick in that Mooney game that we saw. Brock Lowry passed in for number 84. We've seen a lot of teams this year, and I think when you talk about a front four or front three, that that defensive line, depending on what style they're playing, there's none more impressive than this Irish front three or four. From the 23-yard line, there you see the total offense, yardage. Canfield with 80 yards and counting to this point. Lowry looking, and he will put his head down and push his way up across the 25. He's out to the 27-yard line. We'll give him four on the play. Brought down by Lorenzo Rohrbaugh. And you see, Canfield not shying away from throwing the football here tonight. Another called pass play right there. Nothing developing downfield. Brock Lowry, a very capable runner, tucks it and gets what he can to bring up a manageable third and five. From the 28-yard line, closing in on two minutes to play in the opening quarter. Empty backfield for the Cardinals. They'll bring a man in motion. It is Scotty Eaton who takes the handoff, and he is dropped immediately. He may have gotten to the original line of scrimmage. Tyreek Dunlow is there to make the stop. It'll bring up fourth down, and Canfield will have to punt. Well, the last time they gave Scotty Eaton, it was going the other way. He went all the way. That time, the Irish defense ready for him. Ali Shalash in punt formation. Back deep to return for Ursuline is Will Burney, who's a playmaker and can do some special things. Burney makes the catch at the 38, puts on a move, and then he is dropped immediately. Outstanding special teams coverage by the Canfield Cardinals. Among those there to make the stop, Mike Malkovitz and Angelo DeLucia. Boy, DeLucia does a great job in the open field, just wrapping up Bernie, which is not easy to do. Nope. And bringing him down, like he said, with some help. Look like Aiden Rodgers there as well. Hunter Knotts was also down there to help on the stop. Ursuline now. Trying to get some points, Erickson takes the snap. He will give it to Lynch, and Lynch up to the 40-yard line, Number just across the 40, near the 41, for a pickup of a couple. More tempo from Ursuline as they will go without a huddle as we're inside the final minute of this opening quarter. Three wide receivers to the right, one far side to the left. Erickson will give it to Lynch. Lynch bounces off one tackler and muscles his way to the 45-yard line. Pick up a four. Anthony Mazzella there to make the stop for Canfield. Stop made by number 14, Anthony Mazzella. 
He had really not a lot of places to run for Christian Lynch. And there's movement across from Canfield. Ryan Schneider jumped across, but was he drawn? Let's see. Nope. And let's see if that will give Ursuline a first down. It will, I do believe. Yep. We'll move the chains with 31 seconds left. The Irish. Snap the ball before the chains are reset. Erickson blasts his way. Open field. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Number well, we four, talked Jack about it moments ago. Here. Jack Erickson's Touchdown legs Erickson. are very dangerous. Doesn't get enough credit for running that ball out of the backfield. But boy, nobody even touches him on his way to the end zone. 50 yard touchdown run for Jack Erickson. His eighth rushing touchdown on the season, and we're tied at six. And it looks like Ursuline will go for two. The offense stays out there. Erickson brings the man in motion. He will give it to Farrell, and Farrell cut down short of the end zone. And so we stayed tied at six with 22.1 seconds left. Brock Lowry there to make the tackle for Canfield on the two-point try. Boy, evenly matched game. This one has been as good as we had hoped. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been so impressed with Canfield's ability to tackle in the open field. I think when teams have played Ursuline this year, the thing that they've struggled with is kind of containing that speed, containing that three-headed monster in the backfield. Uh, but Canfield does a nice job tackling, being where they're supposed to be. And the rains are coming down still, and it looks like it may be raining harder now than it was earlier today. You wondered what kind of impact it would have on the ability to throw the ball. There you see it. Hats off to our tremendous crew who were busy all day setting things up and getting all things ready to go. We get the easy part of sitting up here and watching a great football game, but yeah, they deserve a, a heck of a lot of credit. So McGlone has the football teed up. And it is a short kick which will be hauled in across the 15 to the 20, 25, up to the 30-yard line. And no further than that on the return for Canfield, Jack Davis again. Tyran Davis there to make the tackle on special teams for Ursuline. Let's check out some scores from around the area. No score between Cardinal Mooney and South Range. Grove City with a 7-0 lead over Sharon in that Mooney game in the second quarter. And of course, our scores are brought to you by Spitzer Lordstown in North Jackson. At Spitzer, our world revolves around you. First and 10 for Canfield from their own 30-yard line. Two backs in the backfield. This is Brock Lowry trying the right side, and he's such a strong runner. And he muscles his way ahead of the 34-yard line. And that's going to do it for us here in the first quarter. One quarter in the books. We're tied at six on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Our prices are really sweet. They're safe big all October. Don't delay, just hurry. The Spitzer Chevy Lordstown, where you can get Panda prices on every vehicle on our lot. Plus, enjoy Panda protection with our Spitzer Shield, featuring unlimited time and miles, with our lifetime nationwide powertrain warranty, and much more. Don't be scared, come and save. Spitzer, our world revolves around. It has been a back and forth football game here at Bo Ryan Stadium. Such a historic stadium filled with such great football tradition. Those Ursuline coaches up in the box, hopeful to 
orchestrate a game plan that will see them advance to the regional final. Chad Prispensky, Ralph Sandy with you tonight. This is week 13. Glad you're joining us here on the WKBN app. Draw play. This is Lowry. 40, 45, 50. Lowry cuts it back inside, and he is wrestled down at the 35-yard line. Brock Lowry brings such great speed and athleticism, and it was all on display right there. Yeah, he does have athleticism and speed, and he also has some power to his game. You know, playing free safety, you know, he has some power, got those big legs, and, you know, uses a combination of both of those things to move that ball down the field. A big explosive play for this Camfield offense. 31-yard run from the Ursuline 34-yard line, nine seconds into this second quarter. And we have a whistle, and we have a timeout taken by Canfield with 11.51 left to play here in the first half. This one tied at six. In case you're just joining us, we'll show you how this one has gone down to this point. First quarter, Scotty Eaton rips off this pretty-looking 56-yard touchdown run. Canfield off and running with a 6-0 lead. Later in the first, Jack Erickson for Ursuline got in on the act. He follows suit with a 50-yard touchdown run to tie things at six. That's where we are early on in the second quarter. Ralph, your impressions of this matchup early on in the second quarter? Uh, even, right? I think both of these teams are evenly matched coming into this Week 13 matchup. And, I, and we've seen a smattering of big plays, and those big plays have changed the complexion of the game, and, and that's why there's two scores up there. We saw the long Scotty Eaton run, and then we saw the long Jack Erickson run. And other than those big plays, you know, we've seen them grind it out a little bit, and, you know, drive, stall, punts. But, you know, you got to keep your eyes on the big plays here tonight for both of these teams. There you saw Dan Reardon, who is a Canfield graduate. Brock Lowry looking to throw. Fires complete to the near side inside the 30-yard line. And that is Gavin Raymond on the receiving end. Canfield has thrown the ball maybe more than we expected with conditions the way that they are. Yeah, throwing way more than I thought they would, but I think it really benefits them having that two-dimensional offense. Haven't seen Urson go to the air yet. We'll see what happens through the rest of the second quarter. Second and three from the 27-yard line. Brock Lowry will put his head down. He spins his way down to the 26, down to the 25, and refusing to go down, he muscles his way inside the 25, and there are late flags that come flying in, and it looks like it'll be against Ursula. Let's see. It is a personal foul. If I can read lips, which I'm not great at it, I think it was Michael Branch that committed the penalty. And one of the things we're starting to see at all levels of football are the offensive line or the teammates starting to push the pile. And we start to see it right here. And oh, there you see right in the corner of your screen, a little extra pushing and shoving. And that's going to get you the flag. But with that extra pushing by the offensive line to get three, four more yards on these on these runs is you know, pretty incredible because that's something a couple years ago they wouldn't have allowed. Canfield into the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. And it is first down and 10 from the 12-yard line. Empty backfield for Brock Lowry. Lowry brings a man in motion. He fakes the handoff. He's rolling to the near side. Lowry is pushed out of bounds right near the original line of scrimmage. Couldn't find anybody open. Yeah, Canfield not afraid to pass the ball. Another called pass play. Nothing open down the field. Good job by the Ursuline Irish defense. Forcing Lowry out of the pocket. And it looks like it's going to be a loss of about one on that play. Yep. We'll call it second down and 11 from the 13-yard line. The future Indiana Hoosier at the controls. Trying to give Canfield a second quarter lead. Lowry will keep it himself up the middle. Lowry races in for the touchdown. Brock Lowry with a 13-yard 
touchdown run! And Canfield recaptures the lead. Boy, and you can see on that replay right there, everything just opens up for him. Again, a well-designed, well-blocked play by that Canfield offense. They run it to perfection. 17th rushing touchdown on the season for Brock Lowry. Myasek on for the extra point try. Snap back. Ball down. Kick up. And the kick is good. 11-17 left. Campfield 13, Ursuline 6 of the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Sheely's Furniture, Appliances, and Mattresses. The best things in life happen at home. Locally owned and operated, Sheely's relaxed shopping experience means browsing and lounging is always encouraged. Find Flex Steel and more at Sheely's Furniture and Appliance, because the best things in life happen at home. Canfield Band has had plenty to play about here in this first half. Cardinals now with a 13-6 lead over Ursuline in the Division Three Region 9 semifinals here at Bull Ryan Stadium. Football is teed up. Mayazek bounces this one out of bounds. And the little squibber. So Ursuline will open up. This latest drive with pretty good field position. So we may re-kick it. So the Cardinals are going to collaborate right towards the sideline with head coach Mike Pavlansky. And now they'll kick it from the 35-yard line. D.C. Farrell is back deep to return for Ursuline, along with Will Burney across the way. Mayazek with a short approach. He punches that one to the far side. It's caught at the 23 across the 30. 35-yard line. Up to the 40 and the 43 yard line. And that was Joe Baylog on the return. And so Ursuline will have it. First down and 10. Can't feel looking good. And it's a steady diet of Brock Lowry, Ralph. Yeah, Brock Lowry doing it both with his arm and his feet on that drive. And give credit to those guys up front for opening holes for him to get him into the end zone. Erickson dumps it off to the near side. It is Bernie making the catch, and he got knocked down, but not before he's able to reach the 46-yard line. Well, we see the average finally throw the ball here in the second quarter to Will Bernie, a dangerous athlete out in space. Christian Lynch takes the handoff, rumbles over his own lineman, and pushes his way up to the 50-yard line. And it's a pickup of four. That will set up third down and two. Erickson of the four wide receiver set. Trying to convert a third down, and Erickson looks across the way. And maybe changing the play. Erickson gives it to Lynch. And Lynch will have the first down. And a little extra. Down to the Canfield. 47-yard line. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage comes the Irish. And the give is to Christian Lynch. And Lynch... With more positive yardage inside the 45. He's down to the 41-yard line. 
And boy, they are going. You talked about playing with pace, playing with tempo. That last snap happened to Canfield D-line was still standing up on the snap of that ball. Second down and six upcoming. One back in the backfield. Erickson throws across the middle incomplete looking for Bernie. Bernie had a step or two, but it was off the mark. But easy for me to say with the rains coming down, throwing downfield is going to be a problem regardless of the distance. Would you agree? Yeah, most of the throws we've seen tonight have been those short intermediate routes. This time I think Jack Erickson rushes this throw a little bit. There you see the play fake. I think he had, well, he had to rush that throw, right? Yep. I mean, <laughs> now we see why. Hunter Knotts with a big hit on Erickson. Third and six from the Kenfield, 42-yard line. Farrell comes in motion left to right. Erickson will keep it himself. He's down to the 40, but no further than that. It's a gain of two. It'll set up fourth down and four. Brought down by Danny Inglis, and it looks like the offense for Ursuline is going to stay out there. They'll officially call it fourth and three from the 40-yard line. Erickson looks back across to his offensive coaches. Four wide receivers set. Erickson rolling under duress. He throws and it is caught right at the sticks. Hold in by Tyran Davis. And let's see where forward progress is given. It appears it's going to be a turnover on downs. You know, we talked about it earlier, Canfield's ability to tackle. First of all, great effort, effort by Jack Erickson getting that ball even out, avoiding the sack. But you see Canfield getting to the football. Finally, it's Caden Cahoot that finishes it off there on the sidelines. Secure, solid tackling really forces that change of possession. So the Cardinal defense stiffens up, and it'll be first and 10 for Canfield at the Cardinal 39-yard line, or just shy of the 39. Movement. Ursuline jumped across. John Oyer, our referee, has been busy in this first half. Brock Lowry takes the snap, turns and gives to Inglis, and Inglis breaks a tackle. There's a flag down, however, all the way across on the other end of the field. And the Cardinals will be backed up five yards. Inglis with a good-looking run on that play, however, but unfortunately for him, it's all for naught. Illegal formation is the call. So they march it back, and it'll be first down once again with one back in the backfield three wide receivers far side to the left and lowry will turn and give and that play got absolutely blown up in the backfield tyreek donlow has been such a major defensive force for ursuline and that young man helped polish off the play that was Dom Marzano on the carry for Canfield. Yeah, but it's Michael Branch at the bottom of that pile. The big D lineman wrapping up the feet, getting help from his teammates. Second down and 11. And we have another flag that comes flying in. Is there too many men on the field or perhaps an illegal substitution against Canfield? These are the kinds of things you don't expect in a playoff game, Ralph. Yeah, uh, play has been sloppy here, and you could say, hey, it's week 13. There's some, there's some nerves maybe involved. Obviously a big stage here tonight for both of these teams. But both of these teams are experienced playoff teams, so I'm not sure why the penalties, but obvious penalties nonetheless. Second down and 16 from the 33-yard line. Brock Lowry. Looking to throw, firing downfield, and a 
It's a diving attempt at the football, and what a grab! Hold in by Davis. Will it count? The officials are talking about it. We'll get another look at it here. And that is picture perfect. What a grab by Davis. Yeah, it looks like Davis cramping up there, but Brock Lowry takes a big hit, but able to deliver that ball where only his receiver could get it. Jack Davis lays out for it, secures the catch. And again, that's pretty good coverage on the defensive side of the ball by D.C. Farrell. Just a perfect play. 24-yard pass completion to Davis, who is slow to get up. And you hope he is okay, but Brock Lowry paid the price. Well, not so much there. He got knocked back a little bit. And you have to give credit right there defensively to Michael Branch for, for not following through. You know, he'd attacked another 15 yards onto that play. What a catch by Davis. And it is a Canfield first down to the 43-yard line. First down and 10, rolling second quarter clock, down towards the eight-minute mark. And Brock Lowry takes the snap. He'll sweep the near side, cuts it back up, middle of the field. He's to the 25, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! 43-yard touchdown run, Brock Lowry, and the Campfield offense strikes again. And again, you see the patience of Lowry stretching that out to the right side. Once he gets through that group of defenders, there's nobody else out there. Jimmy Scherer with a nice block down the field, and it's Brock Lowry's speed that gets him into the end zone. 19-6, Canfield. Myazek on for the extra point. And we have a whistle and a stoppage. And it's a penalty against Ursland. And it is declined. And so now, we'll try to kick it again. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. 7.56 left to play in the first half. Canfield 20, Ursland 6 in the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Nightline Embroidery and Screen Print in Girard is looking to immediately add some new faces to our team to fill a number of open positions. If you have experience in silk screening or graphic design or are eager to learn, please email us your resume or apply in person today. Teal College, an energetic place focused on your academic and personal success, where so much is so close. Good news! Teal College is now enrolling for fall 2023. Enjoy an incredible college experience close to home. Apply today at teal.edu. And welcome back, 20 to 6. Canfield leading Ursuline. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you. The winner of this game will advance to face the winner of Chardon and Kenston. Coming up one week from tonight. 7.56 to play until halftime. A short pooch kick and another penalty. Boy, there's a lot of flags in this first half, Ralph, aren't there? Yeah, you know, sometimes we, we talk during these games that, oh, that's a ticky-tack. They're being too, you know, cautious. They're throwing the fly over. These are obvious penalties that they yeah. have to call. And, they, you know, they're many times pre-snap penalties. So we'll re-kick it once again. And the other thing that's surprising, these are two very well-coached football teams, two of the best coaches in the area. Yeah, you're exactly right about that.
Bernie is back deep along with DC Farrell. Myzek. Has it teed up and they'll try to go quite a bit deeper now. Or will he? Onside kick. It will roll. And the Cardinals have recovered. Did it go 10 yards? First and 10. Canfield on the recovery. Mike Pavlansky pulling out all the stops. The only question was, would it go 10 yards? Well, let's look at it right here. See Myasek put it out there, and he just waits for the ball to come to him. Just above that white line, it was close. And I think it was really close to being offsides again there, too. Well, Canfield got a big stop on fourth down, turned it into a touchdown. Now they're going to get a change of possession here on special teams. Let's see what they could do. Tell you what, they would have gotten it anyway. Even if they waited an extra second. But the call is Cardinal football first and ten from midfield. Canfield up 20 to 6. Lowry turns, gives, Inglis tries the left side. He's ahead to the 48-yard line. We saw Inglis back in week two. Against Poland, really put on a show of hard nosed football for these Cardinals. He usually makes his money on the defensive side of the ball, but a very capable runner as well. Second down and eight. They mark the football at the 47 yard line. It is a four wide receiver set for the Cardinals. It will bring a man in motion left to right. Lowry keeps it himself, blast his way, open field, 20, 15, 10, 5, down to the three-yard line. Rock Lowry strikes again, can't feel back into the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. And really Brock Lowry just putting this team on his shoulders. Give credit to the guys up front again, they could seal that lane for him to run into and run through. And again, you see the speed. I think sometimes when you see how Brock Lowry's built, you don't think he has that speed element, but he does, and he shows it to you right there, getting it near the goal line. 49-yard run for Brock Lowry. A chance for the Cardinals to punch it in here from the three. And there was a momentary stoppage of play. And now we're back to it. First and goal from the three. Now back to each side of Lowry. And Lowry will keep it himself. Lowry tries the left side. Lowry in for the touchdown! Three yard touchdown run for the future Indiana Hoosier. And it is now a commanding lead for the Cardinals. And you can just see schematically that formation. They shift everything to the left. They, he basically runs behind a convoy right into the end zone. Can't say enough about what this young man has done. One of the best athletes to ever come through Canfield High School. Mayazek on for the extra point. His kick is up and good. 6.35 left to play here in the first half. Canfield up 27-6. And I think a lot of people are saying, wow. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, this game was back and forth there in that first quarter. And, you know, it's just a matter right now of Canfield taking advantage of opportunities. We talked about it. A big stop on fourth down. It pays dividends in the end zone. You kick an onside kick, you recover. It pays dividends again in the end zone. So they're taking advantage of opportunities. And they have the Irish down 27 to 6 here in the second quarter. 6.35 left to play until halftime. Keep in mind, Ursuline will get the football to start the third quarter. So if the Irish are able to put together a scoring drive here, you can kind of double dip it. Two for one, if you will. 
scoring update. It is South Range now with a 14-0 lead over Cardinal Mooney. Chardon, meanwhile, with a 3-0 lead over Kenston. Again, the winner of the Chardon-Kenston game will face the winner of this one here. Chardon and Canfield have faced off each of the last two years in the postseason. Chardon ending the Cardinals' season both times. One of the up men hauling that one in. It is Joe Baylog as he's across the 35 and out to the 38-yard line. So Ursuline has it first down and 10. What do the Irish need to do now? Well, I think they need to continue to stick to the game plan. I mean, I don't think they're going to come out here and throw the ball with Jack Erickson. But they also have three great runners back there. You have Erickson, Lynch, and Farrell. You also have Will Burney, who, you know, is just a touchdown machine. So they have the weapons. Uh, they just got to execute. Our previous scoring update, by the way, brought to you courtesy of Spitzer Lordstown in North Jackson. At Spitzer, our world revolves around you. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. This is D.C. Farrell trying to find the edge. And Farrell is escorted out of bounds right near the 40-yard line. Well, that can't feel the latest scoring drive. Pretty darn impressive. Steady diet of Brock Lowry rushing the football. And now it's the Ursuline offense trying to answer back. One back in the backfield. Erickson will turn and give. This is Farrell. Farrell is tripped up as he crosses the 45 to the 46, but a Canfield offense has looked very good, set up by a key play on special teams. The onside kick. And Brock Lowry ripped off a long run that set up a three-yard touchdown. From the 46, Irish keep it to the ground. This is Farrell again. And Farrell bounces his way, pinballing ahead for a first down to the 49-yard line. So the Irish picking up little chunks here and there. That's two plays in a row. Anthony Mazzella makes plays in the run game because those safeties for Canfield are playing way up on the line of scrimmage because they know these weather conditions don't allow for the long ball. This is Will Burney cutting the corner. And he's knocked down and out of bounds. Right at about the 40-yard line. Get him into the open field, and big things typically happen as well. Yeah, I mean, we've seen Will Burney, especially on special teams, returning kicks and punts, how dangerous he is. They mark the ball at the Canfield 40-yard line. This is D.C. Farrell trying to find a hole. Jitterbugs his way inside the 35. Football came out. And it appears the officials will say that he was down. Well, we'll have the luxury of looking at it again. Farrell that time able to get the corner, cut it upfield. Oh, that ball came out. Farrell. Trying the left side. Down to the 32-yard line. Well, the looks of that replay, that would have been a turnover. It was a bang-bang play. They say the ground caused the fumble. Urson quickly runs the play. Let's take a look at it again. Watching this ball comes out. And you can see that he hits the ground Boy, without sure that football. it sure was out. You're right. Triangle in the backfield surrounding Erickson. Erickson sending Farrell in motion. Erickson takes the snap, puts his head down, and rumbles his way down to the 26-yard line. Wrapped up by Danny Inglis of Canfield. And Erickson's slow to get up. Erickson taking over for Brady Shannon. Tremendous quarterback that graduated. This is Christian Lynch blasting his way inside the 20. Wrestled down at the 16. Ursuline quickly into the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone. Yeah, Christian Lynch, one of my favorite running backs to watch this year with a nice gain. Erickson pushing his way further into that red zone. And Ursuline has moved the ball here on this drive. We talked about the fact that they'll get the football to start the third. But can they stop Brock Lowry if they're able to punch it in here? That remains the question. First and ten for the Irish. Erickson turns and gives. 
not much running room to speak of whatsoever as Will Bernie got a carry for the Irish. Gain of just a yard, second down and nine. Yeah, Danny Inglis and again active on that defensive side of the ball for the Cardinals coming up with another tackle. 335 on a rolling second quarter clock. Erickson pitches. Farrell grabs it. Farrell tries to put on a move and he's buried back at the 22 yard line. The Canfield defense was not fooled in any way, shape, or form. The Irish operating in reverse on that play. Well, you watch Santino Coca on that play, number 57. He doesn't get the tackle, but he, he's the whole reason that this is a negative play, right? The pitch man is his responsibility, he sticks with them. And boy, does a great job of holding things up till Schneider can get there. Schneider with the stop, timeout, three minutes to play here in the second quarter. Canfield 27, Ursuline 6. There's a big hit on the quarterback right there. And again, Coca just holding on for dear life. Doesn't get credit with the tackle. Look at Erickson still his days just a bit. And, and that I, may have been the reason for the timeout. Yeah, and I felt like he's been banged up a couple times on this drive. This Ursuline team, of course, advanced all the way to the state championship game, losing in the final seconds. In heartbreaking fashion, it's an Ursuline program that has won 27 of its last, make that 21 of its last 27 games, and its offense has been held to less than 28 points just once. That was the game that we saw. Cardinal Mooney, they amassed just 13 points on that night in the regular season. Third and 15 upcoming. WKBN's Big 22 includes the five blocks of granite, which honors the top high school football linemen. Sponsored by the Moransky Companies and Coca's Pizza. Go to WKBN.com. Erickson fires, and it's a sliding grab inside the five by Bernie. Jack Erickson's pass is complete to number two, two Will Bernie. Boy, another and tough one to call, but they're going to call it a catch. And it's going to be called back. A penalty marker is down at the 30-yard line. And so the Irish will go from a difficult situation to an even more difficult situation. It is a hold on Ursuline. And Erickson paid the price again. Holding penalty. Anthony Mazzella there with another hit on the quarterback. And remember the last time the Irish were in the red zone, you had that jumbo formation, the bad snap. They come away with no points. They find themselves back in that area and now find themselves with a third and 20 outside of the red zone. They're down and 24 wide receivers set. Jack Erickson looking to throw. He has time, zings it in there, and is caught. Down to the 10-yard line by Mark Manning. Well shy of a first down, and it'll be fourth down upcoming for Ursuline as Manning made the grab, and it'll be fourth down. And it looks to be about six. Four wide receivers set. Erickson back to throw for the Irish. Erickson firing. It is caught right at the sticks inside the five-yard line. Mark Manning hauls it in. It's a first down. A big play for Ursuline to convert right there. Well, that's a gutsy play call and a great catch by Manning. Good execution by Jack Erickson. He's just getting enough protection up front to hang in that pocket and deliver a strike. And they know how important this drive is. And, you know, they're not going to settle for a field goal. That's why they go for it there on fourth down. They know they need a touchdown on this drive. Timeout taken. 2.02 left in the second quarter. The area's best football players are part of WKBN's Big 22. It is sponsored by ASECU, a service everyone can use. And by Fred Martin Ford, where they sell for less, a lot less. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports 
and see the top high school football players in the Valley. So the Ursuline Irish will have the ball first and goal from the three in a must score scenario now down 27 six. Yeah, and you talked about it, how important it is and how this game can change with the touchdown here, knowing that Ursuline gets the ball to start the second half. You know, the entire complexion of this game could kind of turn around in their favor, but it all starts right here in these next two minutes and two seconds on offense. They recall in that state championship game, Ursuline had a huge lead throughout the second and third quarters. And it all went awry in the final seconds as the Irish fell in heartbreaking fashion. First down and goal from the three. D.C. Farrell muscling his way to the right side. And he got stacked up by Brock Lowry and company. But it looks like D.C. Farrell has some room to run. And the door closes quickly. Anthony Mazzella and Lowry shut it down. This is Erickson. Erickson races in for the touchdown. Number four, Jack Erickson, the ball carrier, touchdown. Two-yard touchdown run for Jack Erickson. His second scoring scamper of the night. And Ursuline cashes in. Boy, just a gutsy drive that time by Jack Erickson. You know he's not 100%. At least on that drive he wasn't. He was beat up, took a lot of big hits, had a big completion on fourth down and then gets it into the end zone here with under two minutes left. Erickson will hold for James McGlone. 94 seconds left in the second quarter. High snap, ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is no good. Boy, special teams have been big here tonight for both sides. And with 134 left to play, here in the first half, it is Canfield with a 27-12 lead. Yeah, no tip ball there, no blocked extra point. It was a high snap. I think it threw the timing off a little bit. And McGlone misses to the left. And now we have a minute 34 left. Canfield is going to get this football with one timeout. They have shown the ability, both with, you know, the quarterback, Brock Lowry, and we've also seen Scotty Eaton with quick score capabilities. We'll see what Coach Pavlansky has to do here with 134 left on the clock. So the timeout situation is this. One timeout remaining for Canfield, two remaining for Ursuline. If you're the head coach, how aggressive are you? Well, I, I, I don't think you're throwing the ball as far as you can down the field, but I also think that, you know, Brock Lowry has shown you with a well-blocked offensive front, he could take it the distance. So, you know, I, I don't think you kneel on it. Uh, but with the weather that you see right there on your screen, I think you keep the ball in your quarterback's hands and you see what happens. And as soon as you so, show that shot, people at home say, I'm glad I'm on my couch right now. And I'm glad we're in this box. Yep. <laughs> McGlone punches that one downfield. It is picked up and taken across the 15 to the 20, 25, 30. Lowry up ahead of the 34-yard line. Number 12, Brock Lowry. So Lowry, it's decent field position for the Cardinals with a buck 28 left on this second quarter clock. Ball placed at 34, first and 10, Canfield. And the question will be answered now, how aggressive will the Cardinals be? Lowry with one back in the backfield. Three wide receivers far side to the left. One near side to the right. Cardinals bring a man in motion left to right. Lowry fakes the handoff. He keeps it himself, puts his head down, and then muscles his way up near the 40-yard line. Stop made by number 20. Landon Charles brings up second down. They'll march it back to the 39 now. And it's a pickup of five. The approaching the final field. minute. They're serving wedding soup. Cavatelli. Pepperoni rolls. Checking into the backfield. Uh, Dom Marzano. Danny Inglis. 
Lined up to the left of Brock Lowry. And the give is to Inglis, and Inglis is up across the 41. Number 11, Danny Inglis. And wrapped up right there. And it doesn't appear that Canfield is going to have a huge sense of urgency to snap the ball on this third down play. Content at the moment with a 27-12 lead. And we may not snap the ball again until it is the third quarter. Final 10 seconds ticking on down. What a first half it has been here at Bo Ryan Stadium in Niles on a rainy night in week 13. Your halftime score, the Canfield Cardinals 27, the Ursuline Irish 12. Our halftime festivities will commence when we come back. You're watching live coverage of the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. We're serious about football at Fred Martin Ford, but it's our customers that matter the most. Hey guys, Donnie Murphy from the low price leader, Fred Martin Ford. Quit paying over MSRP and take advantage of $5,000 off select Ford models or save with finance rates as low as 0.9%. Our team at Fred Martin Ford is your best defense against high prices, because we sell for less, a lot less. There's a reason Bar Bruno and Pizzeria is the best place before, during, or after a game. Take your favorite drinks, the best bartenders, and add in Ohio's best award-winning pizza, and you get the perfect recipe for football. You not only have access to the entire Bruno Brothers menu, but also extended menu items you can only get at Bar Bruno and Pizzeria, like our fabulous flatbreads. Watch the next big game at Bar Bruno and Pizzeria in Boardman, or Bruno Brothers Pizza in Austintown for all your game day needs. Travco Behavioral Health supports our young athletes in all paths to recovery. We are stronger together. Visit us at WeCareMoreOhio.com. Here at BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel, you just stop in and leave $49 down. You pick them out and drive them out the same day. BNR Wholesale Tire. MCCTC is an option for students in 10th grade to make that decision for 11th and 12th grade. Students typically come to us because they want a different way of learning. They really want to get working with their hands. We have waiting lists for the majority of our programs by March. If you are interested in coming to the Career Center, think about it early. Feel free to call or email anytime to schedule your private tour. We can't wait to meet you. We went and we checked with individuals that used R&D construction and they all were very pleased with the quality of his work. They put 43 square of shingle on my roof. That was a complete tear off and replacement in two days. Randy recommended a certain roof pattern for us that we weren't even considering. We used that shingle on our house and we, we were thrilled with it. We never would have chosen that shingle. It really pops on our roof. We were very impressed with his vision. We were very impressed with his professionalism. It was perfect. We love it. I would recommend him to anyone. Hi folks, Steve Bott from Mark Thomas Ford. I hope you're enjoying tonight's game. Stop out and see us for any of your automotive needs. We're two miles north of the Route 82 bypass on Elmo in Cortland, Ohio. Well, the rain's continuing to fall here at historic Bo Ryan Stadium. Your halftime score, Canfield 27, Ursuline 12, in a pivotal Division Three regional semifinal. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski alongside Ralph Sandy. Let us revisit our keys to the game. Our keys to the game are brought to you by Wendy Perez of the Wendy Perez team. She is the keys to your new home and tonight's game. Ralph. All right, Ursula came in wanting to run and stop the run. I think they've done a nice job running the ball offensively. They have not, however, stopped Brock Lowry from running the football, something they're going to have to prove on here in the second half. For Canfield, they wanted to own the trenches. I think holding uh, Ursuline to 12 points, they have done their job in the trenches. And finally, the turnover margin we thought would be big. Well, it wasn't in the first half. It's 0-0, no turnovers, but it may pay big dividends here in the second half with this weather. We were close on a couple plays, but none just yet. 
Of course, we've had a steady diet of Brock Lowry. So much talent in the field from both sides. Let's get to know some standouts from the Irish and the Cardinals, starting with quarterback Brock Lowry. My name is Brock Lowry. I play quarterback and safety for Canfield High School. I mean, we've been playing with these, the same guys since, uh, since middle school, and I think we have a lot of chemistry. And when the going gets tough, I think we all have each other's back, and that's good, what's going to carry us deep into the playoffs. My favorite food is penne with vodka sauce. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, like, I like the song Jamie's Crying. It's a good song. Someone I most admire is probably Drew Brees, just because uh, he's a smaller quarterback in the NFL, and when you're a smaller quarterback, you have to work harder and uh, you have to be smarter. So I admire him. What am I not good at? Uh, I'm not very good at bowling. <laughs> That's one thing I'm not That's really hard good. to admit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, pretty solid at cornhole. I'd like to say. <laughs> I'd say uh, tight spaces. <laughs> oh, yeah? Like claustrophobic, like being trapped in like a small box or something. I don't know. Celebrity crush. I'm going to have to stick with uh, Jennifer Aniston again. <laughs> Some people just call me B Lau because. Uh, So. I hope humble, just because I don't really want to be one of those flashy guys. With all, with all the things going around around me, I just kind of want to stay in my own lane. Well, if I if I celebrated by myself, then I'd probably be sat <laughs> for the rest of the game. So usually I just go around for my linemen first, just because. Uh, they're the most underrated players on the field, so I just I go to them first and give them hugs and high fives and stuff like that. I mean, like you said, uh, a lot of people value, especially for big local games like against Poland and our first week one against West Branch. There's going to be huge crowds there, which uh, which I really I really like about uh, Northeast Ohio football. My name is Mark Manning. I play receiver, cornerback, and uh, special teams uh, for Urson High School. My favorite team in the NFL is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And in college, I like Ohio State. I'd have to go with like, one of my best friends, uh, Matt Rudin. Yeah, I played with him my first two years in high school, and then he's obviously at Miami uh, playing college football, so that's probably my, my favorite athlete. Uh, my favorite food would have to be my grandmother's uh, rice and uh, beans. My favorite movie being uh, The Blind Side or 42. My favorite pump up song probably Kill. The person I most admire probably my mom. Um, she's raised me and my two siblings um, by herself for the past 13, 12, 13 years. Golf. I can't swear in a golf club. I don't know if it's because of baseball, but I can't swear in a golf club. I'm good at rollerblading. I can rollerblade really good. <laughs> I don't like heights. I'm afraid of heights. But I'll do anything if I'm strapped in. Ooh, my celebrity crush. Um, Scarlett Johansson. Some of my coaches will uh, call me magic. I don't know why. It just stuck with me after a couple games because I do weird things sometimes. So they'll just call me magic. But other than that, I have, really don't have nicknames. Some people will just add to my name. I'll get called like Marcus or Marky Mark, but never really Mark. 
obviously the ones in the playoffs, but um, probably Fitch and then Harding again. I'd have to go with the student sections. I mean, their energy and seeing them every day during school, it, it's, it's uh, probably the, the best part of Friday nights. My name is Danny Inglis. I play running back for Canfield. Well, obviously we have Brock. Brock's a great player going to Indiana. And we have our whole O-line going back. Same with the D-line, and we just need to fill in a few skill spots. My favorite athlete probably be Chase Young from Ohio State. Favorite food. Anything that's Italian, but just besides fish. I don't like fish. Favorite movie. Uh, this isn't really PG, but it's called Project X. It's about these kids have a house party and just goes wrong. My favorite pregame pump up song is probably Shoot the Thrill by ACDC. That is hard. That is hard. Um, golf. Yeah, I'm really bad at golf. Practice how you play because if, if you don't practice in like a game like situation you're not gonna play like that. I hate planes. Even though I fly a lot, I hate planes. Oh it's definitely Poland. You know, just brother versus brother. It was a close I celebrate on offense, you have to celebrate with the O-line. They always paved the way, and then on defense, just the whole team. Friday Night Lights, it's just everything. You know, my father and uncle, they did great things under Friday Night Lights, and it's a big name to hold up to. You just gotta perform. My name's DC Farrell. I play quarterback at Earth High School. Everybody wants to play hard. They like, they focus, and they push each other a lot. My favorite team is Dallas Cowboys. My favorite athlete is Deion Sanders. My favorite movie is Lion King. I collect football cards. Okay. I collect football cards. I admire my dad because he he boosts my confidence and he also like he pushes me to my limits. I'm not good at uh, baseball. I cannot play baseball whatsoever. Bees. I hate bees. I hate them. When I was little, my grandma gave me a nickname named Boo Butt. But I never understood why she always called me that. She called me that all the time. I'm looking forward to playing Austin Fit. Excited to play that. Gritty. This band's called Gritty. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is like everybody come out, support. Uh, I also like like people I grew up with. I also play them, play with them on Friday nights. We always talked about it when we were little. That we was gonna be under the lights playing. Great talent and a great football game here in week 13. We'll continue our halftime festivities after this. Canfield 27, Ursland 12. You're watching the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week.
This halftime report is sponsored by MP Vivo. I'm Wendy Perez. When you work with the Wendy Perez team, we guarantee you exceptional service, second to none. We have the key to your next home. Call Wendy Perez, new brokerage, same great service. For over two decades, Gary Haustu roamed the sidelines of local high school sporting events and Ohio State football games, capturing moments that'll live forever. Unfortunately, Gary's battle with cancer ended in January of 2022, but his memory lives on through his work. Whether you knew him from The Valley's Playbook, a sports publication he and his brothers Chuck and Ray ran in the 90s, or as a proud member of the Bucknuts media staff, the name Gary Haustu will always have a place in local sports history. Inner Circle Pizza Canfield. Come see why it's much, much more than a pizzeria. The 42-seat granite bar and eight HD TVs make this the best seat in the house to watch your favorite sporting events. The casual setting is perfect for family meals and get-togethers. Enjoy all the original icy favorites plus specialty pizzas, sandwiches, salads, and daily specials. Dine in or carry out Inner Circle Pizza Canfield, where food and fun are endless. Ironwood Boulevard, across from the Hampton Inn. Reliability, innovation, scale. These three values are those we look forward to in our business and in our team. If you're ready for a reliable employer who looks constantly to think outside the box in big ways, we're ready for you. Apply now. Help us push the envelope and deliver success. Envelope one, take that one extra step. Youngstown Tile would like to wish both teams good luck in tonight's game. Go bold, go local, go Youngstown Tile. Visit our showroom in Canfield today. Sheely's Furniture, Appliances, and Mattresses. The best things in life happen at home. Locally owned and operated, Sheely's relaxed shopping experience means browsing and lounging is always encouraged. Find Flex Deal and more at Sheely's Furniture and Appliance, because the best things in life happen at home. A rainy night in Nile for the Division Three Regional Semifinals. Canfield leading Ursland tomorrow night. We'll greet you from Canfield High School for Division 7 action. With a preview, here's Sports Team 27's Zach Ferdia. Two programs that really couldn't have more different history. We're on three, we're on three, one, two, three, one. As this Warren JFK team is looking for its fourth regional championship since 2016. Lucky for us, we've been in this situation multiple times. The senior class, you know, we've come up short a little bit and we just want to get the job done. Uh, we're going to go into it, we're going to have clear hearts and we're going to make sure we know what we want when we leave. While the Southern Indians see themselves further than any team in program history. It's an amazing feeling to make it this far and no one of the school's ever done it and we're just hoping to come with another win to keep going. I'd love to win this TV game and just show everyone around us uh, that we need the respect where we deserve, honestly. And we know the 11-1 Southern Indians and head coach Rich Wright will lean on that run game that sees two 1,000-yard rushers in Colin Sukup and Wyatt Morris, plus a defense looking to cause problems with 14 forced turnovers. I mean, it's the same as any other week for us, uh, we're, but we are excited, I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, 100% we're really excited to uh, be in week 13. We're excited to, you know, be, you know maybe redeem ourselves on TV. But the 10-1 Eagles defense is stingy as well, pitching two shutouts during the season and have more recently only given up 4.6 points per game during a five-game win streak. We kick off, you know, June 6th, and it doesn't stop until, you know, we're done. And uh, so they put a lot into this. Uh, they put a lot of effort. It's, it's a 12-month process. So when you get to here, you feel like, okay, we're achieving, we're working towards that goal, and uh, it's exciting. For Sports Team 27, I'm Zach Verdia. We'll have that one for you live stream tomorrow at 7 o'clock on the WKBN app and a replay of it will air at 10 tomorrow on My YTV. We'll be back after this on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. This halftime report is sponsored by Mahoning County Career and Technical Center.
Looking to sell your home? Call Klasik Real Estate for hometown service, values, and expertise. Locally owned since 1969. Sell your home fast. Call Klasik Real Estate at 330-757-8855. We're serious about football at Fred Martin Ford, but it's our customers that matter the most. Hey guys, Donnie Murphy from the low price leader, Fred Martin Ford. Quit paying over MSRP and take advantage of $5,000 off select Ford models or save with finance rates as low as 0.9%. Our team at Fred Martin Ford is your best defense against high prices because we sell for less, a lot less. At Youth Intensive Services, our mission is to help families and individuals of all ages suffering from addiction, mental and emotional disturbance. We offer a range of services from individual, couples and family counseling to medication management, employment services and background checks. YIS also performs autism testing, diagnosing and consultation on behavioral interventions in your home, school or community. Learn more today at youthintensiveservices.com. Youth Intensive Services is there if you or a loved one is in need. Contact us today. For over 75 years, the Newcastle School of Trades has been teaching America's trades. We are the Newcastle School of Trades, and for 75 years, we've been your trade school. Get more flavor at Hothead Burritos. It's your fresh and healthy choice on game day or any day. The best used cars in the valley at StadiumGM.com. Ballarat is more than just a place to work. Ballarat is a great place to work because of the day-to-day -day challenges, the engagement of employees, and the teamwork and collaboration between great people. Start your career. Visit BallartJobsOnline.com today. Hi. I want to tell you about my Trish Yearwood home collection available at Sheely's Furniture. With two locations serving Ohio and Pennsylvania, Sheely's is one of the country's top sellers of my home collection. And the best part? At Sheely's, you never have to wait for a sale. They offer everyday low pricing as well as a price match guarantee, so you can shop the Trish Yearwood home collection with confidence. Come see my collection with something to offer for every room in your home and get it all with free local delivery only at Sheely's Furniture. Imagine coming home after a long day to discover your furnace or air conditioner has gone kaput. Don't despair. Call Ainsley Heating and Cooling for true 24-hour service. Our expert technicians respond in hours, not days, to keep you comfortable. Better yet, we never charge extra for after-hour service. Nights, weekends, holidays, anytime. Reliable service from the best and brightest in the industry, always at a reasonable price. When the unexpected happens, there's one thing you can always count on. Ainsley Heating and Cooling, keeping homes comfortable since 1976. Good luck to both teams in tonight's game from Valley Industrial Trucks. Valley Industrial Trucks, your professional full-service material handling corporation. Rainy night here at Bull Ryan Stadium in Niles, Canfield 27, Ursland 12. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you. Our halftime report is brought to you by our friends at MCCTC. Team numbers from the first half look this way. Ralph, quickly, what do you think? I've been impressed with uh, Canfield's physicality on both sides of the football. And you look at those yard totals, I think you, you came into this game with the weather. You wanted if either team were able to move the ball, and both have done so successfully. Steady diet of Brock Lowry through the air and on the ground. He's been really impressive as we took a look at our House 2 halftime highlights, which are brought to you by MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. He's a human highlight reel here tonight. Really, he, as the senior leader of this team, has carried the load on offense and has been oh so good. Not They're much passing to speak of whatsoever. Lowry, 48 through the air. Erickson, just 3 of 4 for 24 yards. But Erickson did his damage, Ralph, on the ground. Yeah, really both quarterbacks. And with all the weapons that both of these teams have, it's been the quarterbacks. Lowry on one side, and there you see Jack Erickson for the Irish getting up both uh, touchdowns for Ursuline. 
Rushing numbers look this way. Erickson, 18 shy of 100 for the night. On the ground, Brock Lowry, another night to remember. 163 rushing yards, and Lowry continues to pile up the touchdowns as well. It all adds up to a 27-12 lead. I want to clarify something from halftime. We mentioned tomorrow night's JFK Southern Division 7 Regional Semifinal game. We'll stream it live at 7 o'clock on the WKBN app, and it will air at 9 o'clock on my YTV. So 9 o'clock on TV, a tape delay tele telecast. I'm told it's 9 a.m. All right, here we go. First and 10. Upcoming shortly for the Ursuline Irish, who hope to put some points on the board. Lots of umbrellas, lots of rain gear. Temperature isn't bad here tonight. Now you wondered as it started raining so early in the morning, you wondered, well, maybe it'll let up by game time, and boy, it hasn't. Nope, not one bit. It's been that way since early this morning. And so, Ursuline will have it. It's taken across the 30, 35, up to the 40 and the 41 and the 42-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for the Ursuline Irish. And on the return, it was Baylog. And you like that strategy by Canfield. I mean, they're not kicking it deep. They know how dangerous Will Burney and D.C. Farrell are deep. So they're kicking it to the up met and letting their defense or their special teams make the tackle and, and getting their defense out there. So here we go. Irish have it. They keep it to the ground up to the 45-yard line. 23 and Lynch pushes his way. Second down and eight from the 44. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. This is Lynch again. Across the 45 to the 47-yard line. There's a little more pep in the Irish step here tonight. Third down upcoming. And they did what they needed to do on their last offensive possession. They got the touchdown. They knew they'd get the ball first here in the third quarter. And I think this is a very important drive for them and a very important third down conversion here to keep this drive going. Up the middle, Lynch is stopped shy of a first down. It's ahead of the 49-yard line. And now seen, it's an important play here, Ralph. Yeah, we've seen Coach Reardon go for it earlier in the second quarter. Canfield turned the stop into a touchdown. Looks like they're going for it here. Farrell comes in motion right to left. Erickson with Lynch in the backfield. Erickson fakes the handoff. He's rolling. He's looking downfield. He throws, and it is knocked down. Incomplete was intended for Manning, but there's a penalty marker down. And it's roughing the passer against Canfield. That's a killer for the Cardinals. Yeah, you get the stop there on fourth down, and now you're going to save them. Give another 15 yards. We'll take a look at it here. Erickson trying to extend the play as much as he could. Boy, and I'm not sure I agree with that one. That's Hunter Knotts on the sidelines. Yep. Didn't wrap up, didn't take him to the ground. That's a tough call to make right there. But Erickson will take it. Struggling offense will take whatever they can, and they'll certainly take those 15 yards in a first down. They dump it off to Farrell. Farrell can't haul it in. He looked ahead. Was trying to see where he wanted to run. Yeah, you said it just took his eye off the football. Wanted to see that landscape out in front of him because he's so explosive, uh, explosive, but not able to catch that football. Second and ten from the 36. It's a low snap. Erickson picks it up, trying to cut the corner, and he is slammed down. Boy, that thing just kind of dribbled back from center. Well, we've seen both extremes from the center, right? We saw the snap over Branch's head, and that one is about a foot. 
And again, a nice solid tackle by Anthony Mazzella, who has played a whale of a ball game on the defensive side of the ball for Campfield. Third down and a dozen. Three wide receivers near side to the left, one far side to the right. Erickson looking to throw. Erickson has all kinds of time. He will run. Erickson up the middle. First down as he puts on a move. The football came loose, but he's down at the 20. It's a pickup of 18 and an Ursuline first down. Well, Jack Erickson saves this offense again. That Canfield secondary had great coverage on the back end. Nothing there. Canfield only rushing four. Erickson able to beat those four to the line of scrimmage and pick up the first down. Run play goes to Lynch. Lynch bottled up, shoved backwards. Well, that Canfield defense has been tremendous all night long. Dom Marzano there to blow that thing up. Well, you think about it, this Canfield defense has done a nice job of keeping Christian Lynch and D.C. Farrell contained I mean it's been Jack Erickson's legs that have done the damage here tonight second down and 11 from the 21 yard line three minutes into this third quarter four wide receivers set Erickson will again give it to Lynch and Lynch finds a hole and he squirts his way inside the 20 and is brought down at the 16 yard line and into the BNR wholesale tire and wheel red zone Third down and six. Christian Lynch to the right of Erickson. This is Erickson looking to bounce it to the outside and he spun down at the 23 yard line. Boy, Hunter Knott got called for that 15 yard penalty earlier but he makes up for it right here sticking to the quarterback bringing him down he's going to get some help as well by Caden Kahoop oh boy that's a huge defensive play and it brings up a huge fourth down inside the eight minute mark fourth down and 11 for Ursuline trailing it 27 12 Erickson looking to throw he's flushed from the pocket Erickson will look downfield and run to the 15 and he got knocked down at the 11 yard line now let's see where they rule him down the clock is stopped with 741 left Inglis and Marzano combined for the tackle. It'll be Canfield football first and 10 back after this. The best used cars in the valley at StadiumGM.com. Find new roads to savings at the Stadium Superstore, the only place where you'll find every GM brand. Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac all under one roof. Visit StadiumGM.com right now. Search through our massive new and used car inventory and find the perfect make and model to fit your needs. Value your trade and get pre-approved online. You'll find out why nobody beats a Stadium deal. We offer pickup and delivery for service as well. It's the Stadium Superstore at StadiumGM.com. Just prior to us coming back, Canfield flagged for illegal procedure. It is first and 15 for the Cardinals at the six. Cardinals will go to the ground over the left side. It's up across the five and up near the seven yard line. Not much road to hoe on the ground on that play. Pickup of just a yard, it looks like. Ryan Schneider on the carry for the Cardinals. Brock Lowry with a couple of backs in the backfield. Lowry fakes the handoff. He's flushed. He's looking downfield. He fires. Incomplete. Intended for Jack Davis. Davis was open. And the Cardinals had a chance to connect on a big one. Manning on in coverage for Ursuline. And it'll be third down and 14 from the seven. Three wide receivers near side to the right, one far side to the left. 
Cardinals will bring a man in motion right to left and now reversing his tracks. Lowry trying to set up a screen. Does so to Inglis. 15. He's up to the 20. First down for the Cardinals. Ahead of the 25-yard line. Using that tremendous pressure from Ursuline against the Irish. Absolutely. Perfect time to call the screen. You get those blockers out in front of you. And you look at Danny Inglis just powering through that leg tackle of Manny to pick up that first down. 19-yard screen pass. First and 10 from the 26 for the Canfield Cardinals. Triangle in the backfield. This is Brock Lowry taking the direct snap. And he pushes his way to the 26. Back to the original line of scrimmage. This is still just a 27-12 game, so nothing decided yet. But when you're able to convert, keep drives alive. This clock, we're now halfway through the third quarter just about. Four wide receivers set, one back in the backfield. And the running back is Danny Inglis. Cardinals bring a man in motion left to right. Lowry fakes the handoff again. He got buried that time. Brought down on the play by Lorenzo Rohrbaugh. And I'm sure that at halftime, the big focus for that Irish defense was how do we stop Brock Lowry in that run game? And so far, they've done a pretty good job here in this second half. But can they be consistent and can they keep it up? That's going to be the question. And as they continue to run this offensive series, you see that clock continue to run down. Lowry steps up. Lowry bouncing it to the outside, still on his feet, looking to dump it off to the near side. It is caught by Inglis. First down and a lot more up ahead of the 41-yard line. And another Canfield first down. What a play. Yeah, we talk about it all the time. When you have a veteran quarterback, a senior leader, they're not eager to run out of that pocket, right? They're going to keep their eyes down the field. They're going to look. They're going to look. And then finally you come back to a receiver and these wet conditions makes that first guy miss. And again, that connection, Lowry to English picks up another first down on the third down conversion. And they're marching off some extra penalty yardage, and it looks like it is a 15-yarder. That's a big one, and it's going to mark the football all the way down inside the Ursuline 45-yard line. So penalties have been costly. Special teams has been pivotal. And Canfield is in business as we approach the five-minute mark of this third quarter. Brock Lowry with a receiver to each side. And Lowry will give it up the middle. Not much running room whatsoever. Inglis taking the carry. Manning there to make the tackle for the Irish. No gain on the play. They're going to call it second and nine, but it was maybe a half of a yard if that. Cardinals content with the moment with a 27-12 lead. Lowry with an empty backfield brings Inglis in motion. Lowry to throw. He fires. It's tipped and intercepted. Picked off by the Irish. Mark Manning has it at the 38. Ursuline in business. First and 10. Irish. Well, we talked in our keys to the game at halftime. Would turnovers play a factor in this game? And that time Brock Lowry puts it a little high for his receiver. Marzano, dry conditions. He probably catches that. But in these wet conditions, it bounces off. And Mark Manning in the right place at the right time. Mark Manning told me this week what this means to him, this matchup. He wants to make a run at a deep postseason run. And he comes up with the big play there. This is Christian Lynch across the 45 up to the 47 yard line. And Lynch is in a bit of a rhythm now. He takes another handoff. A flag flies. It's inside the 50 and down to the 48. But will it stand? We'll see. He 
officials will discuss. A referee is John Oyer. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be against Canfield. They're asking Coach Reardon what he wants to do. So it's against Canfield. It'll be a legal substitution on the Cardinals. And it will be an Ursuline first down. And another conference in the middle of the field. Yeah, I'm not sure if they added that five yards to the end of the run, which would not be the correct call. Right. So you'd think that Ursuline would decline the penalty. Take the end result. It would set them up at second and one. Meanwhile, the fans in the stands are saying, we're soaked. Let's get the show on the road. Yeah, but so are the refs. So, I mean, they can't, yeah, you know. Yeah, right. So now after a pretty lengthy conference. We'll march things backwards to where it was originally prior to marching off the five-yarder for a legal substitution. And now he'll head over, will the official, to Dan Reardon, everybody on the same page now. I think Coach Pavlansky doesn't like it. So they're going to have to move the sticks back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, everything in working order now, we think. From the 47, Irish will set up shop. And another whistle. Three wideouts far side to the right, one near side to the left, one back in the backfield. It's Lynch. Lynch takes the handoff, and he is knocked down as he reaches the 45-yard line. It is a pickup of two for the Irish, setting up second down and eight, maybe seven. And Christian Lynch has been grinding out those yards here tonight, but we haven't seen that big explosive play from him like we've seen all season long. 64 yards and counting for Christian Lynch. Hard-earned yardage down inside the 40-yard line. It is a pickup of six for Lynch. He now has 70 rushing yards. Well, he runs really strong, doesn't yeah, he? And you said it. They're hard-earned yards because this Canfield defense playing tough. He has to grind out these yards. There's no freebies out there tonight. And Lynch again blasted his way, but he was treated rudely. Slammed down by Hunter Knotts. But it's going to be another Ursuline first down. Erickson will again give it to Lynch, and Lynch pushes his way down to the 31-yard line. A healthy dose of Christian Lynch. What we don't see is a healthy dose of D.C. Farrell. Haven't seen him here in the second half. He's lined up as a wide receiver in the slot on the left side. Erickson looking to throw. Erickson is flushed. He's rolling out, looking downfield, and he throws it. Right near the student section of Canfield. And it'll go as incomplete. No, that is not a souvenir. And it'll be third down. Down to 233 left in this third quarter. Manning and Bernie wide out to the right. Tyran Davis and D.C. Farrell to the left. Erickson will keep it himself, blasting his way down to the 35, inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. They may have even given the 33 in any event. It is another Ursuline first down. 
Well, you have to be impressed by the toughness of Jack Erickson, the junior signal caller for the Irish tonight. He has come up big with those legs when he is needed to. And another conversion right there. First and 10 from the 24. This is Christian Lynch inside the 25. Wrestled down near the 23-yard line. Brought down by Angelo DeLucia. Boy, what a difference a touchdown here would make for Ursuline in the final minutes of this third quarter. They marked the ball at the 22-yard line. 145 and counting in the third. Erickson to throw. Looks right, then left. He's rolled back to the right. He throws. It's intercepted at the 13-yard line. Hold in by Canfield's Anthony Mazzella. Back-to-back -back picks, one for each side. And boy, that's a shot in the arm for the Cardinal defense. Boy, it looked like that ball just came out sloppy, ended up right into the hands of Mazzella. Mazzella's been so good defensively tonight, supporting that run game. That time down in coverage gets the interception. Back after this. Coca's Pizza, your high school football headquarters. Come to pregame with half-off select appetizers in our dining room starting at 5 p.m. Also want to stay for the game? We'll be playing it live. That's Coca's Pizza. We serve it hot. And welcome back. Just prior to coming back, short two-yard run for the Cardinals. It'll be second down and eight for Canfield off the turnover. In the final minute of this third quarter, Brock Lowry has the corner, and he muscles his way up near the sticks. And we'll see if they'll give him the first down. He is darn close if he doesn't already have it. And they may measure. And you look just out in front of that play. You have receivers, you have backs, you have linemen blocking down the field. And that's the physical nature, I think, that, that Canfield has displayed today that has allowed them to, to be in the lead and be on their way to possibly win this game. So they're going to measure Cardinals are saying it's plenty enough for a first down of course you'd expect them to say that Dan Reardon saying not so much so that sideline getting plenty from both sides our sideline reports all season brought to you by Bar Bruno and Pizzeria no better spot after a game than Bar Bruno and Pizzeria So it is a first down. The clock will wind. We'll see if Canfield will let the clock wind on down. This will probably be, unless they go to the air, the final play of the quarter. They don't have to snap it if they don't want to. And I don't think they're going to. Final 10 seconds ticking down, and now what? John Orr says, wait a tick. Perhaps the play clock should have been at a certain point. He may be coming over to tell the Canfield sideline to put a certain amount of time, 15 seconds. Yeah. 
This is taking a long time. So now we have 36 seconds on the game clock. And perhaps it's supposed to start on his signal, and maybe he hadn't signaled just yet. Well, whatever it is, it means Canfield is going to have to snap the ball here. Yep, that changes the complexion there. So Lowry breaks one tackle, still in his feet. Rumbling his way for another Canfield first down. That'll stop the clock again. But the Cardinals will take it. Stop maybe number 20, Charles. And again, just their ability to continue to move the chains, continue to have that clock move. And now that'll do it for us here in the third quarter. What a banner night for Brock Lowry. Three trips to the end zone, 186 yards on the ground. Canfield is 12 minutes away. They can hang on on a rainy night here in Niles. Fourth quarter's next on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. For almost 70 years, Gold Heating and Cooling's legacy has grown across our entire valley. Today, our growing team serves Trumbull, Mahoning, Columbiana, and the Shenango Valley, but we remain true to our core values. From our in-house dedicated dispatch team, installation and service crews, to our fine craftsmanship in our sheet metal fabrication shop. Our entire staff is ready to serve you. And we always have a truck right down the road from you. Gold Heating and Cooling, from our family to yours. Go with Gold! Teal College, an energetic place focused on your academic and personal success, where so much is so close. Good news. Teal College is now enrolling for fall 2023. Enjoy an incredible college experience close to home. Apply today at teal.edu. For the best pizza downtown, visit Avalon Downtown Pizzeria. Dine-in and takeout is available, and delivery is offered for local businesses. Visit our website for new store hours. Call to place your order. Avalon Downtown Pizzeria on Federal Street. Back underway, Brock Lowry ripped off another one to get Canfield up near a first down. Fourth quarter is underway, 27-12. Canfield leading Ursuline in one of the most highly anticipated matchups of the entire season. The winner of this one will face the winner of Chardon and Kenston. Chardon had the lead at last check early in the third quarter. Second down and one from the 44-yard line. Back to each side for the Cardinals. They'll bring Marzano in motion left to right to give this to Inglis, and Inglis trying to muscle his way. A flag comes from the backside. And it's a hold against the Cardinals. So and the, that'll make it a more difficult scenario. Yeah, and those big penalties is something that Cavill has been able to avoid here tonight, setting them behind the changes. They played a very manageable game on offense. This sets them back a little bit. Scoring update courtesy of Spitzer Lordstown and North Jackson. At Spitzer, our world revolves around you. South Range 28, Mooney 6. And Chardon with a 10 7 lead over Kenston in the third quarter. Second down and 10. From the 35 yard line, Brock Lowry will keep it himself, and he paid the price. He got whacked by John Frangos. Other scores, Sharon leading Grove City 21-7 in the third. And it is Slippery Rock, Oliver Hickory 27-0. That game has gone to the fourth quarter. All of our scores is always available online at WKBN.com and the WKBN app. So it'll be third down and eight. An opportunity for Ursuline to come up with a stop now. Triangle of wide receivers, far side to the right, one near side to the left. Brock Lowry looks to throw. He zings it across and a sliding catch. Up near a first down. What a ball game it has been for Jack Davis. 
Well, that's his second big catch, and yet another conversion for the Cardinal offense. And again, that ball moving around a little bit underneath there. And they say he's just a little bit shy. They mark it back. Let's see. Right at about the 44, just across it. And the Cardinal offense is going to stay out there. When you have Brock Lowry, you can certainly do that. Or maybe they try some cadence. Cardinals bring a man in motion. This is Lowry. Lowry powers his way for a first down to the 49. And a Canfield first down. You know, coming into this ball game, I looked at that Ursuline defense and you know, he talked about Lugers and Lucas and Branch, and you, you looked at Tyreek Dunlow and Frangos, and I, I wasn't sure how this Canfield offense would match up physically with them. And boy, they've come in here tonight and punched them in the mouth and have responded like I didn't think they could. An amazing job by this line at Brock Lowry. The line of scrimmage is the 48-yard line. Closing in on nine and a half to play in the ball game. The winner advances to the regional final in Division Three, Region 9. And the give is to Inglis, and he got grabbed and slammed backwards. Isaac Lucas was there, and he had none of it. A nice play by Lucas. Again, one of those big D linemen that we talked about coming into this game. Just beats his man one-on-one, -on -one, meets him in the backfield, and slams him to the turf. Time out on the field, 9-17 left to play. It is 27-12. We'll take it as well on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Coca's Pizza, your high school football headquarters. Come to pregame with half-off select appetizers in our dining room starting at 5 p.m. Also want to stay for the game? We'll be playing it live. That's Coca's Pizza. We serve it hot. Nine seventeen left to play in the ball game. Back to the ground goes Canfield. Lowry powers across the forty-five, ahead of the forty-six yard line. And you can't say enough about what Brock Lowry has done again here tonight. Every time we've seen him, he's been so impressive on both sides of the ball over 200 yards on the ground and counting is three touchdowns tonight cardinals bring a man in motion lowry looking to throw trying to dump it off and it's incomplete looking for inglis hey, you look at those numbers i mean 204 yards rushing the football obviously a great effort but how about 80 some yards passing in this weather here tonight I think it's just added that other element that that Ursuline defense has to worry about. And able to connect right there on that screen pass. So it's a pretty impressive effort nonetheless. Fourth down and 12. And the Cardinals will kick it away. Shalash with a short kick, which will travel out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. It looks like... The 39-yard line. That is where Ursuline will come out. First down and 10. You look at this, and it feels like Canfield has dominated here in the second half. It's still just a two-score game. And Ursuline with the chance to cut into that here in the fourth quarter. Following tonight's action, we'll select a player of the game. It's one player that has made the greatest impact. Our player of the game award is sponsored by our good friends at Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Teal College. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Irish keep it to the ground. Up the middle, it's Farrell. The ball squirted out. So I questioned a little while ago, 
Why DC Farrell wasn't getting some carries finally here on this trip here on offense. He gets the first carry of this drive. He just adds that other element to this offense. From the 43 yard line, DC Farrell with the football and he dumps it off. Double pass, Erickson dropped it and is buried at the 35 yard line. And yeah, good so look. it'll keep the clock rolling, Ralph. Yeah, so you throw it behind the line. Erickson has to catch that, and I'm sure his plan was to look downfield and maybe throw that ball again on the double pass, unable to secure it, and now you put yourself in a long third down position. Third and 14 from the 35-yard line. Lynch back into the backfield, joining Erickson. Erickson looking to the left side, zips it in there, caught! Hauled in by Tyran Davis. And he looks like he is right at the marker. And will they give him the first down? I thought he was about a yard shy. It's right in front of us from our vantage point. And now the whistles come and they'll say first down, so they'll move the chains. Canfield faithful don't like to call. You can see right at the top of the screen. Yeah, you can see where his elbow went down was short of the first down. Back to Lynch. So a good spot, a first down, and back at it with the Irish offense. Inside seven minutes left to play. Pickup of four, second and six from the 47-yard line. In motion comes Will Burney. This is Erickson. Under duress, Erickson swarmed upon and dropped. An army of Canfield Cardinals swarming him from every angle, and he went down in a heap. Yeah, boy, Cardinal defenders everywhere. I think it's Ryan Schneider that's going to get there first. And Schneider gets the sack. Third down and a dozen from the 47. Erickson looking to throw. Erickson zips it in there and it's caught for a first down. DC Farrell with a clutch grab. And that'll keep the drive alive and move Ursuline deeper into Canfield territory. Yeah, Erickson with the strike. DC Farrell catches it, just gets enough for the first down and then also gets out of bounds. First and 10 from the 41 yard line. Erickson rolling to the near side. He's looking downfield. Erickson will tuck it and he's out of bounds at the 36. This one is still far from over with 6.01 left. An Ursuline touchdown here makes things very interesting. But they've got a score to make it that way. Erickson to throw. This time he rolls to the left side. And Erickson slammed down at the 38-yard line. Dom Marzano gets there. Erickson just runs out of real estate. He wants to throw the ball down the field. Looks like he has some open receivers, just unable with that pursuit of that Canfield defense to set his feet and throw it. Third and five from the 38-yard line. Make it third down and seven. Inside six minutes left to play. Erickson looking, zips it. Perfect pass to the 25-yard line. Mark Manning moves the chains again, and Erickson all of a sudden has some rhythm throwing the football. Yeah, the rain continues to fall, and Erickson able to throw those balls in there. Pretty impressive. Run play goes to Christian Lynch, blasting his way, middle of the field, and he's in for the touchdown! And that's the explosive play that Christian Lynch and this Irish offense have been missing through the first part of this game. You know, he was getting four or five yards a pop, which is outstanding, but this is the big play that we're used to seeing. 25-yard touchdown run, and it's 27-18, but... The Irish will not go for two. They will leave the extra point team out there. And this has not been easy for them here tonight. 
snap back, ball down, and it's a fake Erickson looking and rolling, and he's dropped at the 12-yard line, and it stays 27-18, Ryan Schneider making the big-time stop. We'll be back after this on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. The best used cars in the valley at StadiumGM.com. Find new roads to savings at the Stadium Superstore, the only place where you'll find every GM brand. Chevy, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac all under one roof. Visit StadiumGM.com right now. Search through our massive new and used car inventory and find the perfect make and model to fit your needs. Value your trade and get pre-approved online. You'll find out why nobody beats a stadium deal. We offer pickup and delivery for service as well. It's the Stadium Superstore at StadiumGM.com. Boy, the ebbs and flows of momentum. 27-18, Canfield with the lead. Ursland lined up for an extra point. The next thing you know, it's Erickson looking to throw, and he got brought down. So it stays a nine-point Canfield lead. And the Cardinals are getting the football. They'll dribble one, and it is covered abruptly by Eaton. The Irish cut into that deficit through the air for the most part. Erickson looking good throughout that drive, Ralph. Yeah, he spread out the ball. He gave it to a bunch of different receivers. And then in the end, you go back to the bread and butter, which in this case is Christian Lynch getting you the touchdown. So with that missed two-point conversion, still a two-score game. This Irish defense is going to need to get the ball back, and they need to do it quickly. Ursuline has two timeouts remaining, trailing it by nine. The winner of this one gets the winner of Kenston and Chardon. Brock Lowry on the keeper, straight up the middle, backs his way down to the 48-yard line. And Ursland will call its second timeout. The Irish with one remaining. The area's best football players are part of WKBN's Big 22. It is sponsored by ASECU, a service everyone can use, and by Fred Martin Ford, where they sell for less, a lot less. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players in the Valley. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you on a soggy night in Niles. Dan Reardon calling a timeout from the sideline. By the way, our sideline reports brought to you by Bar Bruno and Pizzeria. No better place after a game than Bar Bruno and Pizzeria. That's got to be a very nervous sideline across the way for the Irish trailing this one 27-18. Both of these teams, Ursuline and Canfield, coming in with 10 wins, but only one will advance to the regional final next Friday night. Second down and eight for the Cardinals. One play goes to Inglis, down the sideline, cuts it back inside, 10-5, touchdown! Danny Inglis zigzagging his way. 52-yard touchdown run, turning on the speed burners. And he may have delivered the knockout punch. But what a play fake by Brock Lowry. He runs that to the right, hands the ball off to Danny Inglis to the left, and Danny Inglis does the rest. Again, he does his job on defense and shows you that he can contribute on offense as well. And wow, that's a big play right there for the Cardinals. 33-18, Cardinals trying to make it 34. Mayasek on for the PAT. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and the kick is no good. Wide left, 5-16 left to play here in the fourth quarter. 
It is Canfield 33, Ursuline 18. Wow, what a run by Inglis. Let's take another look at it. Absolutely, you just see him pooling away there at the end. And it's just come down to execution here tonight. And Canfield has executed. Well, you know, we, we see Jack Erickson throw the ball. We've seen explosive plays from this Irish defense all season long. And then you're going to string the, uh, uh, many of them here together down the stretch. There you see the team rushing in general. A lot of yards put up on the ground like we thought there would be in these rainy conditions. And Urson's going to need some more yards here in a hurry. And Ursulin has just the one timeout remaining. Isaac has it teed up. He played a major part in this game. The onside kick earlier tonight recovered by the Cardinals. Isaac. Punches that one. It's picked up and taken across the 25. Baylog to the 30 and ahead of the 31 yard line. So Ursuline back to work. Tackle made by Mike Malkovitz. WKBN's five blocks. Oh, granted, is a major part of our postseason awards. It honors the top high school football lineman in the Valley. It is sponsored by the Moransky Companies and by Coca's Pizza. They serve it hot. Go to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school football players in the Valley. Chad Krispinski, Ralph Sandy with you on a wet night at Bo Ryan Stadium. There's a penalty flag down across the way. And a lengthy conversation coming. And the verdict will be delivered. It is against Ursuline. It is unsportsmanlike conduct. So they'll march the football back. 15 yards. And now another whistle and another stoppage. And you certainly appreciate the officials trying to get it right, but there's been a lot of stoppages here tonight, especially in the second half. Yeah, I was going to say the second half for sure. That first half, we had a lot of penalties, but they seemed to get through them rather quickly. And Coach Reardon not very happy. Coach Reardon is giving it to the official along the far side. And he wants to now discuss with our head referee, John Oyer. Coach Reardon, a Canfield graduate, facing his alma mater. And he's having his say. And I'm not so sure what the lengthy discussion is. Do you have any idea? No, I mean, obviously, I think he's upset with that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty but what they're talking about i have no idea and i don't think we're going to get in a day from any type of explanation from the official to us going over to talk to coach pavlansky about it so coach reardon is out in the middle of the field coach pavlansky is coming out into the middle of the field both are flanked by a captain i've never seen this before have you no. And the only thing that I could think of, Chad, is, is getting everybody on the same page moving forward that nobody does anything dumb. 
gets kicked out for next week if you advance. Just playing smart football down the home stretch. So the two head coaches and the two captains. Right, I mean, that's what you'd have to assume. They're shaking hands, at, I mean, at the 50-yard line. I, I, I think it's all about playing smart football right here for the next five minutes. And now it appears both coaches are going to address their teams. It's going on in the Canfield side and shortly on the Ursuline side. And Coach Pavlansky sending the message, listen, we got a week 14 to play in. Nobody needs to stay home for that game. Be smart. No trash talking, no cheap shots. Let's get through these last five minutes and 10 seconds and, and move on. Scoring update brought to you courtesy of Spitzer Lordstown in North Jackson. At Spitzer, our world revolves around you. South Range, Oliver Mooney, 34-6. Chardon leads Kenston, 10-7 in the fourth. In other action, it is Sharon 21, Grove City 7, and Slippery Rock Blanks Hickory 28 0. That's all of the action for the most part going on in the area tonight. And of course, you can find those scores throughout the postseason on the WKBN app. 5 10 left to play in what has been a very lengthy delay. And at long last, we think we will continue playing football. Ursuline trailing Canfield 33-18. Erickson rolling to the far side, looking to go to the air. He steps up and he whips it into the far sideline. Incomplete. He got decked at the tail end. I think that might have been Marzano that brought him down as he was releasing the ball. And it is second down and 10. For the Irish. I just received word that Chardon was able to come away with the win 10 7. So they await the winner of this one as Erickson is brought down at the 21 yard line. Hunter Knott's there to make the stop for the Cardinals. And it is third down and six. Four wide receivers set. Erickson looking to throw, dumps it off to the near side. Lynch makes the catch, and Lynch got whacked at the 24-yard line. Knocked down by a pair of Cardinals. Anthony Mazzella is among those there. It is fourth down and two. For all intents and purposes, this is fourth in the game. This is Christian Lynch breaking tackles, and he has a first down. Across the 30 and ahead to the 32 yard line. And obviously, at this point in the game, you want big plays, but the weather's really going to hamper those efforts to go deep. We're going to try it anyways. This one hanging up there. It is incomplete. Looking for Manning, but it is a penalty flag that comes flying in in coverage. It was Jack Fabry. The ball hung up there a long time. Tough to throw in these conditions. And there wasn't a heck of a lot of contact there at all. But it is going to be an Ursuline first down. So they mark the ball at the 49 of Ursuline. Irish dump it off to the far side. Bernie makes the catch, puts on a move. He's up ahead of the 50 for a gain of just one. Another example right there, and even on the play two ago, that it's just great open field tackling here tonight by the Cardinals, not letting the speed of the Irish get to them. Second down and nine. Erickson will heave it deep downfield. It's incomplete. Pass intended. Tyran Davis. Jack Harrison pass, number eight, Tyran Davis. 
So that'll set up third down and nine. Third down. Turnover on downs here. If Ursuline is unable to convert, would pretty much end it. Three wideouts to the right. Erickson throws to the middle of the field. Bernie makes the catch. He has an Ursuline first down just inside or right at the 40-yard line. Stop made by number 12, Brock Lowry. First and 10, Ursuline. To get Jack Erickson delivering, which he has done a great job up here in the second half, throwing the football. From the 40-yard line, Erickson gives it up the middle. This is Christian Lynch. Cardinals are hacking away at that ball, trying to knock it free. It's a pickup of five, second down and five as we hit the three-minute mark. Erickson looking to go back to the air. Erickson firing, and it is knocked away incomplete. Jack Fabry on in coverage of Mark Manning once again. And it'll be third down and five upcoming. Good coverage. Yeah, and that's what Ursuline has to do at this point. They have to hope for another interference call or reception. I mean, they need points in a hurry. Third down and five from the 35. Erickson firing, almost intercepted. Off the fingertips of Manning. And it'll be fourth down and five and once again, fourth in the game. Thirty-three eighteen is our score. Canfield leading Ursuline. Erickson firing downfield for Farrell. What a catch for a touchdown! An unbelievable grab by D.C. Farrell. Ursuline has life. Yeah, Jack Erickson throws this up, and I was sure it was going to get an intercept. You see the Canfield defensive back just sitting there waiting for it. That was Scotty Eaton, and Farrell just snags it. A one-handed grab by D.C. Farrell. And it's 33-24 now. And James McGlone will now attempt the extra point. Snap back, ball down, kick up, and the kick is good. 2.42 left to play here in the fourth quarter. And it is a one-score game, Ralph. Yeah, one score and a two-point conversion. So they got their points. It probably wasn't as quick as they wanted to get them, but they got them. 242 left, one timeout if you're Ursuline, and a very important onside kick coming up right here. And really, all you want from an onside kick standpoint is for that ball to get kicked around a little bit. I mean, these wet conditions, you just want someone to field it not cleanly, and then it's fair game. So we're not done just yet. The Canfield hands team comes out on a wet night. And we have seen some strange things during our time calling games. So nothing is a certainty here. And if there is a sort of trick play on an onside kick, and notice you have Mark Manning up there as well as McGlone. So two kickers. And now Canfield will call a timeout with 2.42 left. So the Cardinals have two timeouts remaining. Ursuline has just one. They wanted to get a look at the alignment on the onside kick. And you know throughout the week, Coach Pavlitsky and his staff have looked at every onside kick that Ursuline has done probably over the last two or three years to prepare for this moment. But you talked about it earlier. Coach Reardon known to go in that bag of tricks. What does he have in store that maybe they never put on tape? Erickson has turned it on, throwing the football and running the football. For the course of the night, ripped off a long touchdown run. And Erickson 
On the end zone a second time. And he runs the ball with great authority here. And he threw the ball with great authority on the last drive. Yeah, and as a junior, he's certainly a, a great building piece for this Irish team next year. And whether that next year starts tonight or after week 14, we're soon going to find out. McGlone and Manning are the kickers. It'll be McGlone. Dribbling this one, it's hauled in by the Cardinals at the 49-yard line. Dom Marzano pounced on it and held on for dear life. Well, the key is to have someone not field it cleanly. Marzano goes up, tucks it away, and goes right to the ground like he's coached to do. Now, strategically speaking, one timeout left for Ursuline. It will be called after this first snap. And, and with the weather conditions, I can't see a lot of handoffs here, right? I, I mean, I think Brock Lowry's going to get the snap. He's your best player. You're going to keep it in his hands. And they give it to Inglis, and Inglis sweeping the right side. And the final timeout is taken by Ursuline. With 2.34 remaining, Timeout, Ursuline, their third it is an eight-point game as this one has come down to the wire after Canfield seemingly had control of it. So you think about it, Ursuline can't stop the clock again. Canfield obviously going to stay in bounds as they run their next two plays. And you know for Coach Pavlansky, you don't want to punt come fourth down. I mean, you don't want to get the fourth down, but you know, with these conditions, Urson got very close on the last Campfield punt. You know, and I think right there in that huddle, he's challenging that offensive line saying, hey, you have dominated all night. We need you to dominate for two more minutes. Look at how many plays Ursuline has run. They came up short on the bad snap when they went with the big lineman in the backfield. They drove down. Look how even the yardage is here tonight. Second down and 10 from the 49. Brock Lowry will keep it himself. Cuts it upfield. Pushes his way across the 50. Down to the Ursuline 49 yard line. So this is going to take the clock down inside of two minutes, of course. He yeah, has about 30 seconds left on the play clock, and I imagine he will use every second of it. And then one more snap will do the same thing. It's third down and eight. I think I'm safe saying that Canfield will not put the ball in the air. They have to snap it, though. Play clock down to three, and now Mike Pavlansky will call a timeout with one second left on the play clock. So this next snap will put us inside of a minute. And nine yards will win you the game. So these are the times you're thankful to have a senior leader quarterback like Brock Lowry out there. Because you know he's going to make good decisions. No, he's not going to do anything silly or jeopardize the ball, ball security. And he has been oh so impressive here tonight, especially with the legs. And, you know, he was on full display in that first half with big plays like this one. What a night for Brock Lowry, but it's not over just yet. It is third down and eight for the Canfield Cardinals. Lowry in an empty backfield. Take the snap, cuts it upfield. Power his way inside the 40. And Brock Lowry has sealed the deal for Canfield. And that's how you know you have a great quarterback and a great offensive line when that other team knows what you're going to run and they can't stop you. And in short order, the celebration will be on for the Cardinals, who will get a third shot 
at Chardon next week. And you know they wouldn't have it any other way, right? I mean, they want that redemption. Yes, they do. They talked about it to me earlier in the season. Lowry takes a knee. The game clock will wind down inside of the final minute. So the final minute is cranking down. Lowry looking at the play clock. That is down to six, now five. He takes a knee. Yeah. The two sides will have to be separated now, but there's nothing that can be done now. And the celebration is on for Brock Lowry and the Canfield Cardinals. We will not snap the ball again as the final 10 seconds tick on down. Final score, Canfield 33, Ursuline 25. We will visit with our player of the game. Following these words, you're watching the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. The Hot Dog Shop is your hometown hot dog, and we want to know, how do you like your dog? I like mine with chili. Ketchup and mustard and hot sauce. I've been coming here forever. He is a two chili and cheese hot dogs. Sauce and onions. Chili cheddar. No, che no cheese? No. But I had a whole bunch of ketchup. Kraut and mustard. Chili? Stop in and get your hometown hot dog at a hot dog shop today. Moving the ball down the field takes a plan and a team of people moving towards a common goal. Every step. Every adjustment gets you closer to victory. At ASCCU, we're the team that helps you win. From managing your first paycheck, to becoming a homeowner, to being secure in retirement, we've got your back. Get the winning game plan to build the exciting life you deserve. Join our team at the Associated School Employees Credit Union. We're open to the community. Hi, I'm Kate Flynn here to thank our loyal customers who have been buying and servicing with us for over 50 years. Since 1972, our family of dealerships has been here to serve you. Whether it's Columbiana Cadillac, Buick Chevrolet, Donnell Ford Boardman, the Honda Store on 224, Donnell Ford Lincoln of Salem, or Power GM in Calcutta. With five locations, seven franchises, and over 350 used cars, you will always get your best deal at Flynn Auto Group. When you get hurt at work, we understand it's more than just physically. But you don't have to do it alone. Whether it's workers' comp or social security disability, we'll fight for the compensation you deserve. We're proud and thankful to call our valley home for over 30 years. And we'll be fighting for your rights and helping you heal for 30 more. Heller, Moss, Morrow, and McGill. We're not just your attorneys. We help you heal. Call today. The Moransky Companies are proud sponsors of the Five Blocks of Granite and salute all area high school athletes throughout the year. Well, it was a soggy night here at Bo Ryan Stadium in Niles, Ohio. What a ball game it was. Canfield coming away with the victory by a final score of 33 to 25. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krasminski alongside Ralph Sandy. What a ball game. It was one of the most highly anticipated affairs that there has been in the Valley in a long time. The third meeting between Ursuline and Canfield goes the way of the Cardinals, and that is some kind of celebration in the end zone right now. Even if you take weather out of the picture, it was a great ball game, a very physical ball game between two really good football teams, and Canfield came out on top here tonight. So the Cardinals will advance once again to face off with Chardon. 
As Chardon comes away with the victory, as you can see, 10-7 over Kenston. And the game has now gone final between South Range and Cardinal Mooney. South Range rolls in the end by a final score of 34-6. Elsewhere, it is Grove City coming away with a one-point win over Sharon, 22-21. And it is Slippery Rock blanking Hickory by a final count of 28 to nothing. Here it was Canfield 33, Ursuline 25. It went back and forth, and the big players making the big plays here on this Friday night on a rainy evening at Bo Ryan Stadium. So we will take a timeout, and we hope to hear from Brock Lowry here in just a moment as he has been selected as our player of the game. We're hoping to catch up with him here shortly as the celebration is on for the Canfield Cardinals. We'll take a timeout and bring you back and continue our post-game coverage after this on the WKBN High School Football Game of the Week. Farmers National Bank, fiercely local, fiercely loyal. Welcome to BNR Wholesale Tire Wheel, where we specialize in over 8,000 custom wheels and tires. We will beat any local price, or I'll buy you dinner. BNR Wholesale Tire. Diane Sour Chevrolet is proud to be Trouble County's Internet Showroom. View all of our new inventory in our daily changing pre-owned inventory at DianeSourChevy.com. Also, while online, visit our pre-approval credit department and simplify your shopping experience. Diane Sour Chevrolet is your one-stop service parts and collision center. So come and see us today on Route 422 in Warren or online at, you guessed it, DianeSourChevy.com. The road to savings begins this way. At Walden Management, we rent apartments, but we sell quality, privacy, and convenience. Quiet, comfort, and affordability are what you'll find in our studio, executive, and senior living apartments with convenient locations in Austintown, Columbiana, Newton Falls, and Niles. For nearly 40 years, Walden Management, providing independent living apartments that feel like home. Come be a good neighbor in our community of good neighbors. For more information, visit WaldenManagement.com. MCCTC is an option for students in 10th grade to make that decision for 11th and 12th grade. Students typically come to us because they want a different way of learning. They really want to get working with their hands. We have waiting lists for the majority of our programs by March. If you are interested in coming to the Career Center, think about it early. Feel free to call or email anytime to schedule your private tour. We can't wait to meet you. Here at BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel, we offer you no credit check financing, which means you get up to 90 days to pay with no interest. BNR Wholesale Tire, we know by the money you keep. And welcome back to Ball Ryan Stadium where tonight the Canfield Cardinals top the Ursuline Irish by a final score of 33-25. to 25. Hi again, everybody. Chad Krispinski back with you. It is now time to select our Player of the Game. Our Player of the Game Award is brought to you by Nightline Embroidery and Screen Printing and Teal College. Brock Lowry is our Player of the Game, 218 yards on the ground, three touchdowns, also 87 passing yards. He has some friends joining him as well. The big guys up front. First of all, Brock, congratulations. What does this win mean to the Canfield Cardinals program? Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. This, this one's huge. I mean, for the whole community, we haven't played them since uh, 1984. It was just a great feeling to come out on top. You have your friends with you, the big guys that do the dirty work for you, paving the way. Tell me about the monstrous job that these guys did here tonight. I had to bring my boys out here. I mean, I always talk about them. I want, I want them to get some uh, screen time, too. So it's, it's all credit to these guys around me. How motivated was this group knowing the challenge at hand, a team that played in the state championship game? How motivated were all of you at Canfield to come away with the victory over Ursuline and make a huge statement? Yeah, we've always wanted to, wanted to have a crack at these guys, and uh, it's really just a great feeling to beat a team of that caliber and that, that type of coaching and with those great players too. So it's a credit to our, our great week of practice and uh, all the guys around that helped us win. What was the difference in the end tonight? 
I mean, the difference was just pure, pure grit running the ball, refusing not to go down. These guys up front, and uh, we're just a pure, pure gritty win. Well, I can tell you now, if you have not already heard the other ball game that we were focusing on tonight, and that would be the Chardon game. They came away with the victory, so you get another crack at Chardon. How motivated are you now to face off with them one week from tonight? Yeah, I mean, that, that's what we expected, and uh, we're just going to have a great week of practice, keep, keep stacking the days, and uh, see the outcome next Friday. Congratulations to all of you on a great win and for being named our player of the game here tonight. A great win for the Canfield Cardinals. Thank you. That's Brock Lowry, our player of the game, 218 on the ground, three touchdowns and 87 through the air. It's now time to select tonight's play of the game. It is brought to you by the Hot Dog Shops and Jib Jab, your hometown hot dog in Warren Gerard and East Liverpool, and by Valerick Youngstown. More than a great place to work. The knockout punch delivered by Danny Inglis of Canfield. Such a gritty player, and boy, you get him into the open field, he makes things happen. 52-yard touchdown run. That is tonight's play of the game, putting this one out of hand when it was all said and done. So, Ralph, as we wrap this thing up, this was a great game, great for the Valley, and great for Canfield to move on. Absolutely. Great experience for those kids, and we'll look forward to week 14. Looking forward to it. We hope you enjoyed this presentation on a wet night here in Niles. For my broadcast partner, Ralph Sandy, and all of us at WKBN, my name is Chad Krispinski telling you once again the final score, Canfield 33, Ursuline 25. Till next time, so long, everybody.